Hi friends, uh, this is Dr. Piyush Taylor, Associate Professor in Government Medical College, Surat, in Department of Biochemistry. Today we are going to learn about uh, fatty acid and triglyceride synthesis and ketone body metabolism. Now, first of all, when we are learning about the fatty acid synthesis, first we have to strike that. So what are the factors which can induce the fatty acid synthesis? Now we always believe that when we take the excess dietary, excess diet, dietary carbohydrate and protein, then it definitely going to increase the fatty acid synthesis. So just want to concentrate here, when we are taking the more amount of the protein, that same thing also does the increase synthesis of fatty acid and it may be a reason of the obesity okay so if you believe that uh, if you strictly following the protein diet and uh, will not cause the obesity it's wrong here if you when you are taking the more amount of protein and it is a more than your calorie requirement then it does the obesity and when the fatty acid synthesis is there it ultimately fatty acid going to synthesize the triglyceride and that triglyceride is going to store in a adipose tissue. This particular de novo synthesis happen into the liver, kidney, adipose tissue and mammalian glands. And most importantly we have to remember here it is happening in the cytoplasm of the cell. If you remember then fatty acid oxidation which is a breakdown of fatty acid. It's happened into the mitochondria. Why? When you think about the synthesis happening into the cytoplasm, fatty acid biosynthesis require acetyl-CoA and NADPH and ATP. So these are the prerequisite. Okay. If we, we are just comparing with the same thing with the fatty acid oxidation. If you remember that fatty acid oxidation going to produce the acetyl -CoA. and it will cause in a TCA cycle and then after produce the energy instead of NADPH in beta oxidation NADH get produced and it also produce the energy okay well here you see that whatever things going with whatever the things are going to be a produce in a fatty acid oxidation same thing is required here acetyl co is required here and adph is required here atp is required here like means it utilizes the energy while fatty acids breakdown will you will synthesize the energy we're dividing the fatty acid synthesis in three stages first it's production of acetyl co and nadph because that is a basic requirement part of the for the fatty acid synthesis then conversion of acetyl coa to menyl coa because it is also uh, formation of the chain of the uh, chain uh, chain for the fatty acid and for the chain formation every time some number of carbon is added and that can be done by the adding of the menyl coa so in initial reaction First of all, acetyl coa whatever which available from the molecule will be converted to menyl coa. And in a third stage, we will learn that how fatty acid synthase enzyme complex does the fatty acid synthesis. So first we got the first part, the production of the acetyl coa and an NDH. We all know that acetyl coa is produced in a mitochondria from uh, oxidation of uh, pyruvate, fatty acid, degradation of amino acid and ketone body. You know that when glucose is broken down to the pyruvate and then pyruvate will go in a PDH cycle and then after form the acetyl -CoA. Same way when fatty acid is goes on breakdown when there is the oxidation at the time also acetyl -CoA will produce. There are the amino acid which call it is, we call it is either glucogenic amino acid or ketogenic amino acid and that does the production of the acetyl coa even when we are having the ketone body and 
when we are in a starving condition the ketone body also utilized by the brain as an alternative pathway alternative source of energy while muscles are there skeletal muscle are there that also use the ketone body but in that case first of all the ketone body is broke down and converted to acetyl-CoA and then acetyl-CoA will be utilized for fatty acid synthesis or energy purpose now important thing is that these all the molecules are going to produce the acetyl-CoA and that acetyl-CoA is going to produce in a mitochondria only because the reactions are happening in the mitochondria I know first slides we have remember that formation of the fatty acid happen into the cytoplasm okay so whatever the acetyl-CoA is there is has to come out from the mitochondria and mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to acetyl coa so this is a another challenge so how the acetyl coa which is inside the mitochondria will come to the cytoplasm this is called the one type of shuttle and with the help of pyruvate the acetyl coa, acetyl -CoA is converted to citrate by the enzyme citrate synthesis and then citrate will come out from the mitochondrial membrane and convert it come to the cytoplasm and again that citrate will break down bind with the coenzyme A and convert it to acetyl CoA and then after the pyruvate is produced and that pyruvate will again goes into the mitochondria to take up the another acetyl CoA so you just be able to understand that citrate and pyruvate both are permeable to the mitochondrial membrane but acetyl CoA is not and that is why it has it taken the help of the pyruvate and through that phenomena through the shutter acetyl CoA enter into the cytosol however or previously we can see it come off from the mitochondria and this the cytoplasm and then after the acetyl coa starts its pathway for production of the melanine coa so now we go to the second stage the how acetyl coa is converted to melanine coa now here we can see the structure now remember you don't have to remember the structure or you don't have to draw the structure but for the understanding of this pathway we are concentrating on the structure you can see the acetyl co having the two carbons while melanin co having the three carbon and when this conversion is happened only one carbon molecule is added and that carbon molecule is added in a form of co2 and this enzyme name is acetyl coa carboxylase and it help it, it will utilize the atp now this step is very important by the two purpose first that by this process only acetyl coa converted to manolyl coa and that manolyl coa going to be added into the fatty acid synthesis every time and this uh, this is the molecule which going to add number of carbons into the chain when we want to the 16 carbon fatty acid like palmitic acid every time 2 2 2 carbon get added in a form of melanine coa so if acetyl coa converted to melanine coa then only it will be available and it will going to add it into the chain and secondly it is important because as it is a one of the very important point it is it is a one of the regulatory step of the fatty acid synthesis and when you go to the regulatory step means each and every regulatory factor either allosteric regulation or hormonal regulation this only does by the this enzyme so that is why we have to understand how it can be get regulated so you can see the citrate it does the positive allosteric regulation while long chain fatty acid does the negative 
velocity regulation. If we put a simple logic here, the citrate is substrate for this pathway. And when the substrate is more in amount, ultimately it's going to stimulate the pathway. And when there's a fatty acid, this long chain fatty acid is also going, it means this is a product of the fatty acid synthesis. And whenever the product of the fatty acid synthesis will be more, ultimately pathway is going to be inhibited. And same thing is happening here. That long chain fatty acid going to inhibit this pathway. Very simple regulation, subset going to stimulate, product going to inhibit the pathway. So we just summarize here in short term regulation, it can activate it by citrate and insulin, inactivated by long chain fatty acid alcohol and inactivated by epinephrine and glucagon. Now we just try to correlate with the hormonal regulation. We understand that insulin is making the short term regulation. Now we all know, if we remember, then insulin is considered as a protein and fatty acid preventive or it prevent the fatty acid oxidation and protein breakdown. And same way that is why if insulin is more in amount it will induce the fatty acid synthesis. Now if you remember as initially also we have discussed if you taking the more carbohydrate diet then it will more fatty acid synthesis. Now we add one another point here. If you take the more carbohydrate ultimately more insulin gets synthesized. And here we can correlate if more insulin is synthesized, it activates the fatty acid synthesis. When you come to inactivation, this logic already we understood. We come to the epinephrine, non-epinephrine, and glucagon. It's like reverse to the excess carbohydrate. If you are having the less carbohydrate, or if you're doing the exercise, or if you are in the stressful condition. It's not stressful condition, it's not only like a mental condition, it may be a physical stress, it may be a surgical stress, it may be a medical stress. If any stress is there, epinephrine will be a more in amount. And that epinephrine will inactivate the fatty acid synthesis. And reverse going to be happen. If fatty acid synthesis is inactivated, fatty acid oxidation get activated and more fatty acid will be broken down and that is the reason why in every stress patient may have a weight loss. In a long term regulation already understood increased consumption of a diet with excessive calorie high carbohydrate will increase the fatty acid synthesis if you taking a low calorie diet and if you are doing the fasting can increase the decrease the fatty acid synthesis. This is the same thing that you discuss about the long term and short term regulation but uh, we have to remember like that a, this is one type of covalent modification that's happening with the uh, acetyl carboxylase enzyme. If insulin is in a good in amount there will be a phosphorylation or a, sorry, there will be a dephosphorylation of the acetyl carboxylase enzyme and it become active and then after fatty acid synthesis will happen. If you have the glucagon epinephrine will be more and it will make the phosphorylation of the acetyl coa carboxylation and inactivation of the acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme. So up to here we have understood about the two stage, the how acetyl coa is available. Second we have understood how acetyl coa converted to mannanoic coa by acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme. Now coming to the third stage, that how fatty acid synthesis complex, it makes the fatty acid synthesis. So uh, this is one type of the enzyme complex, they are called a multi enzyme complex. It means it's a single protein molecule 
it having the dimer like it's having the two unit in it and that unit is composed of the total seven enzyme and one acyl carrier protein it's a little bit confusing so let's go with the its figure and then only we can listen how it works so this is the fatty acid synthase complex here you can see this is in the middle there is one line is there there is a one chain there is another chain and each chain having the one two three four five six and seven enzyme this one is seven enzyme and eight one is a acyl calor protein so this is the one unit of the fatty acid synthase complex this is considered as the enzyme complex then another unit same enzyme seven enzyme and one acyl calor protein so that is why it is also the dimer type of the enzyme which having the two unit and with that unit each unit having the seven enzyme and one acyl carrier protein so that single protein with the multiple domain in it that does the whole reaction for the fatty acid synthesis so means every time any enzymes are not get activated but the role is defined when the that stage will come that protein will interact and that enzyme reaction will happen these are the name of the enzyme which is there with the facilitated synthesis complex one is acetyl transacylase melonine transacylase ketoacyl synthase dehydratase enol reductase ketoacyl reductase thioesterase and acyl carrier I'm again going back and try to give the some understanding. You can see on each unit, one unit having and having the ketoacyl synthase enzyme, which having the cysteine as a one residual amino acid, and we know the cysteine is the sulfur containing amino acid, so having the sulfur and is free it, because it is a side chain. Same way, one of this part, same unit having the another end is there. The acyl carrier protein is there. The acyl carrier protein is made up of the pentothenic acid, which is one of the type of the vitamin B complex. And this is also having the free end, which is having the sulfur group is there. Okay. Now, this sulfur, group, these two sulfur groups are going to help a binding of the acetyl coin, meloline coin, and through that, all the synthesis will happen. As you go to the pathway, more understanding will develop and more you come to know that what is the importance of the, this sulfur group. So here, here you can see there is a enzyme fatty acid synthase. Here we are shortly we have drawn here. We are drawing only a end. This is the one as cysteine end. It means uh, here the keto acyl. Uh, you can see here. There is a ketoacyl synthase enzyme is there. There is a cysteine group and there is a SH is there. Same thing is here. Ketoacyl group is there. Cysteine is there and sulfur is there. Here there is acyl carrier protein is there and sulfur is there. So two sulfur ends are here. When acetyl CoA will come and by the enzyme acetyl transacylase acetyl coa will bind with the this cysteine end of the sulfur that's why the enzyme name is acetyl transacylase means acetyl coa is transferred and binding with the acyl group and that is why it is a acetyl transacylase enzyme in the second step menolyl coa will come and the menolyl coa will bind with the another end that is the acp end is there so that is why this enzyme name is a melonine transacylase. Now we can understand that there is an enzyme, a single enzyme is there, complex is same, on a both on a, on a having the two ends are there, and on that two ends, one is acetyl coa and another is a melonine coa is bind. 
so for the more understanding you take another figure you can see here there is a ketoacyl synthase enzyme is there cysteine is there sulfur is there and which is added with the acetyl coa another unit of fatty acid synthase enzyme acyl carrier protein is there sulfur is there on on that at malonyl coa is there now another enzyme will come that is called a condensing enzyme and that condensing enzyme another name is a ketoacyl synthase enzyme so in that what happened this particular acetyl coa is transferred to the malonyl coa so fatty acid synthase enzyme which having the cysteine end it get free and both the malonyl coa and acetyl coa will remain in a sequence at the acyl coa protein end so two molecules are binding together and that is why the uh, or you may say the aggregate together and that is why the enzyme name is a condensing enzyme or you may say the ketoacyl synthase enzyme same phenomena we can see in a form of figure here we try to understand why we call it is the ketoacyl synthase enzyme you can see first the acetyl coa got bound then malonyl coa got bound then both get condensed and when you condense or acp hand this is a one keto group another is that is another keto group this keto group is a, of the coenzyme a and this keto group is came from the malonyl coa or this acetyl malonyl coa and that is why this keto because of this keto group it is called a ketoacyl coa and that is why enzyme name is a condensing enzyme or ketoacyl coa synthase enzyme going to the next step now we are trying to understand only about the one end where the acetoacetyl or ketoacyl group is added with the acp so in the first reaction nadph will come and reduction will happen and we know that when the reduction going to be happen the 2h will be donated to the molecule so 2h will be donated with the help of molecule nadph plus h plus and that will be added on this keto group and that is why now this double bond is broken down and converted to hydroxyl group and h group so whatever the new molecule is formed now we call the beta hydroxybutyl acp okay initially was a keto group and that is why we call the keto acid another name is aceto acid now it become hydroxyl that is why we call the beta hydroxybutyl acp name of enzyme simple it is a reduction so it reduces enzyme what get reducted to so keto acyl acp get reducted so enzyme name is a beta keto acyl acp reductase enzyme in the second step you can see one h2 is removed from the molecule so simply it is a dehydratase enzyme okay name of the enzyme is a beta hydroxy acyl acp dehydratase enzyme so whether when the h2 is removed it means for the removal of the h2 one oh group is required which came from here and one group from here uh, sorry to say but uh, there is a mistake with the this figure so this oh group is removed from here so ultimately oh and 1h molecule is removed so h2 is removed so here two carbon hexa double bond 1h is here and 1h is here so now this is a one type of the double bond so one we can say even the double bond is there it is a type of unsaturated fatty acid and this is a cis type of bond bond so that is why we call it a trans enolyl acp molecule or another name is a protonyl acp in third step again reduction will happen and this nadph will be utilized 2h will be added 
one edge will be added here one edge will be added here so ultimately this double bond is broken down and ultimately this two edge is converted to methyl group so whatever the treat uh, uh, keto group is there now you can see but there's a keto group is there now it converted to hydroxyl group and methyl group is formed and now we having the butyl acp or you can say butyl coa or one type of butyric, butyric acid which is a four carbon fatty acid and still it is attached with the acp and enzyme name is a, as it is a reductase enzyme is there reduction is there enzyme name is a trans enolide acp reductase if you put the summary on this pathway you can clearly see that it is a reverse of the fatty acid oxidation when we convert it to fatty acid oxidation instead of reduction there is a dehydrogenation is there because H is removed then here instead of dehydratase there is a hydratase is there water molecule is added here again in the removal of H there will be adding of H is there so here there is a reduction dehydratase and a reduction is there when there is a beta oxidation is there dehydrogenation hydratase and dehydrogenation will come so it is an almost reversal of the fatty acid oxidation now once we form the B12-CoA on the ACPN now how the new chain will start or how the new cycle gets started that we try to understand here now already we understood B12-CoA is a stair with the ACPN so in the first reaction when we are starting with a new cycle this butyl coa it transfer from the acpn to cysteine and acpn get free and this acpn will now take the another maronide coa but that we have to understand that every time when chain is that condensed or when the every time chain get the new carbon that new carbon always come from the maronide coa and again condensing enzyme will do the work and metropetronyl coa will transfer to the manoline coa and again this cysteine and got free and new cycle gets started now manoline coa plus butyl coa are there with the acpn so initially when the recycle will start then again same repetition of cycle will happen like reduction dehydrogenation dehydratase again reduction and again two carbon will get added so when the kuiper carbon will goes on every time two two carbon will be added initially butyric acid get formed then caproic acid will form and then caprylic acid get formed so that is the eight carbon compound will be there and when the process will goes on at the end if you wish to produce the palmitic acid, 16 carbon compound get formed. Once the our fatty acid got synthesized, that going to synthesize on a ACPN. Then another enzyme will come, that is a thioesterase enzyme. And that thioesterase enzyme break this thioesterase bond, to remove the fatty acid from the fatty acid synthesis complex enzyme and the enzyme got free from the fatty acid and we got the new fatty acid so we take the summary if you want to do the palmitic acid synthesis there is 16 carbon compound is there then ultimately we require 8 acetyl coa now we have to understand why acetyl coa because that acetyl coa going to synthesize the manoline coa and that manoline coa going to be added every time when we repeating the cycle so seven repetition of cycles are required and on each cycle we require one acetyl coa and each cycle two carbon will be added in a form of maloline coa and every time on each cycle two NADPH get utilized so here when the one cycle is 
occur one cycle will occur at 2 nadph get utilized ultimately 14 nadph utilized for the seven cycle and seven ATP utilized because every time acetal coe has to convert it to manolite coe and when the acetal coe is converted to manolite coe it is utilizing the ATP and at the end we got the palmitic acid 8 acetal coe 8 coenzyme A 8, 7 ADP 7 phosphate and 7 H2 So, hope you have liked it, uh, this fatty acid synthesis lecture. In second lecture, we discuss about the triglyceride synthesis and we discuss about the ketone body synthesis also. So, wait till that. <laughs>